Inside number 23, my podcast about sewing and knitting and my crafty life in general. My name is Katie and you can find me on both Instagram and Ravelry as Miss Lavelli. You can find me on Periscope as Miss Katie Tweets and the podcast also has a Ravelry group which you can find by searching Inside Number 23 Podcast and that is where you will find all of my show notes as well as in the little down bar below. As always, I am coming to you from Hertfordshire, just north of London in the UK. A huge, huge big welcome back to any of my long-term viewers, but also a big hello and welcome to anyone who's checking me out for the first time. Thank you for coming and sharing a little bit of crafty time with me today, and I hope you enjoy what you see here. So yeah, it's been a week. I know I say that a lot, but it really has been a week. This week at Inside Number 23, Partially I think because it hasn't been a complete week since I posted my last podcast because obviously last week I posted on a Tuesday as opposed to a Monday and this week has really flown by. I've been super super busy. I haven't got a huge amount to share with you this week in terms of progress on projects but I do have some new things on the needles that I hope you'll find interesting. But other bits and pieces that have happened this week, which a lot of you already probably know about if you follow me on Instagram or you are subscribed to this channel, and the biggest news of the week was that I met lovely Eric of the Sticks Plus Twine podcast this week. In real life, he came to London just for one day, which is kind of crazy. Um, he came with his, his lovely partner, Sebastian, and... Yeah, it was incredible to to meet him and spend time with him and I would say check out my vlog and also Eric's vlog that he's posted. I will link everything obviously in the show notes so that you can go and check those out. But um, honestly, it was one of the most wonderful days and I really do feel like I've met one of my, my best friends. We literally spent nearly 12 hours together and didn't get bored and pretty much talked non-stop and I think that's pretty impressive. So yeah, it was absolutely amazing. If you don't watch Eric's podcasts, you really, really should. Like I said, I'll pop all his details down below, but he's wonderful, even better in real life. And yeah, it was pretty awesome. A lot of what I'm gonna talk about today is linked with my time with Eric uh, because I did do some damage. We both did some damage in one of the main yarn shops in London, which is Loop. So I should be sharing some of my goodies with you a little bit later. But in terms of the vlog that I created for my time with Eric, it's actually the first of what I'm going to be doing, a series of vlogs which I am titling Outside Number 23. So clever and original, I know. But basically I thought it would be fun to kind of share with you some of the things that I get up to outside of my happy little crafting home. So it's going to be a little bit of documentation of me taking trips and adventures and I thought you might enjoy it, so keep your eyes peeled for a few of those that might be coming in the near future. The other kind of ridiculous and incredibly exciting thing that happened this week was that I have reached now 4,000 and plus subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> I feel like it was only uh, um, minutes ago, seconds ago, that I was kind of celebrating with you guys that I'd reached 2,000 subscribers and now being over 4,000, it's just amazing. So first and foremost, thank you to everybody who's been supporting the podcast. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your comments, for your interactions. It's just been the most incredible experience and I know I say it quite a lot, but this podcast genuinely brings me so much joy. It is one of the best things that I've ever decided to do and I'm just so thankful for all of you that, that tune in and watch and who are interested in, in what I have to say from week to week. <laughs> so thank you all so, 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 so much and it's overwhelming, it really is and I can't tell you how happy and how proud I feel to have reached this kind of monumental landmark which I never would have imagined that I would let alone reach and 
definitely not in this kind of time frame. It's just, it blows me away. So thank you. But in honour of you amazing people who have been subscribing and just giving so much back to me, I wanted to give something back to you guys. And that is going to be in the form of a giveaway. Yay! So to celebrate um, the 4,000 plus subscribers for Inside Number 23, I will be having a giveaway. In terms of what that will be and kind of what you will need to do to be a part of the giveaway, it's kind of going to give us a little bit of a um, segue into the next segment on the podcast because something arrived in the post this week which is going to be a part of the 4,000 plus subscriber giveaway. So without further ado, let's move on to owl post now the more long-term viewers amongst you may notice that the title of this segment has changed last week i had my wizarding week episode which was fully dedicated to all things harry potter to celebrate the end of our first ever cow the harry potter cow and a quick side note everybody who is waiting for prizes i haven't had time to get to the post office yet but i will be sending your prizes off next week so thank you for your patience and i will let you know as soon as they're in the post and during wizarding week i renamed all of my segments to be more harry potter themed obviously in honor of the week this segment was called super snail mail which is super fun to say and i do like the idea of a little snail in like a superhero cloak or something like that but Owl post just really struck a chord with me and I was having a conversation with lovely Kristen of Vulin Vine Yarns this week and she also adored the owl post section and basically said you have to keep that title and I was like I know so from now onwards my segment to do with everything that arrives in the post is going to be known as owl post so yay a constant reminder of how much I love Harry Potter <laughs> but anyway, in terms of what the owls brought me this week, um, it's a very, very special package that came from the lovely Emma of Eldenwood Craft. Now, if you don't know about Emma and her business, she creates beautiful project bags right here in the UK. And some of the prints she uses, I know she uses a lot of kind of nature themed prints, woodland animals and that type of thing. I've been a big fan of hers for a long, long time. I've seen her project bags on other podcasts. I have seen her um, Instagram feed, which is just full of beautiful things definitely check her out on Instagram and check out her Etsy shop which is um, eldenwoodcraft.etsy.com and Emma got in touch with me saying that she would love to send uh, something for a giveaway for the podcast and obviously it couldn't have been better timing that it arrived in the week of me reaching 4,000 subscribers so let me show you what Emma sent <coughs> Now, if you have been watching for a little while, one thing you will know about me is that I have a little bit of an obsession with bees. I don't know what it is about bees, I just love them. And I tend to have a lot of bee-themed objects around the house. It just makes me really, really happy. So when I saw what Emma had sent for you guys, I was this close to wanting to just snap it up for myself because she has sent the most beautiful project bag. If you can see the size of it, look at how big it is in like comparison to my head. It's a big bag. It's a beautiful bag and it has this gorgeous print which is bees and dragonflies. It also has this lovely kind of almost tealy grey at the bottom and the inside of the bag is all these cute little, almost like fruit loops. Absolutely adorable. And this bag guys. <laughs> The quality of this is incredible. I think that the interfacing that she uses is almost kind of quilting interfacing because it has this lovely squishy finish, which is just stunning. And yeah, this is gonna be a part of the giveaway. So thank you so much, Emma. This is beautiful. And whoever gets this is just gonna be the luckiest person in the world. So before I go on to what else is gonna be included in the giveaway and talk about that a little bit more, I said that it was very difficult for me to let you guys have this bag, but Emma did make that considerably easier by sending me an incredibly thoughtful little parcel of my own. And you guys, I nearly cried when I got this. Let me just show it to you. So first of all, she sent me this card. 
Oh yeah, gotta love the pug card. Look at him. And she wrote the sweetest message in it, which is just for myself. But she did say that I would find within the parcel that she'd sent with the giveaway prize a little pug package that was all for me. And I was really intrigued by this. So I opened up the parcel. And what do I find? But this, it's all little puglets. Look at them. Oh my gosh, this one, just like Rolly. This one, just like Rolly. It's, it's incredible. I absolutely love this fabric. It's one of my favorite colorways anyway. This kind of um, minty green background is adorable, but absolutely covered in little puggies. Oh, and as if that wasn't enough, inside that bag is a little notions pouch same fabric gorgeous little puglets and a puggy notebook oh so cute emma you spoilt me so much i i just thank you thank you thank you i need to pick the perfect project for this bag and it's beautiful i love it so much so thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you you are incredible but going back to the 4,000 subscriber giveaway, along with your gorgeous, gorgeous bag from Eldenwood Craft, I am also going to be including what was donated a little while ago, and I'm so happy to finally have a reason to give it away to you guys, a skein of wool and vine yarns and this is her gashly crumb colorway on her volka base which is an 80 10 10 combination of merino cashmere and nylon and it's my ultimate favorite base on yarn it's a beautiful color absolutely adore it and so you will be getting these two along with some other little treats and goodies that i shall be including in the parcel along with that i also have two patterns that were recently donated to the podcast and that is lovely marcia of the twitch and stitch podcast has donated her schmancy shawl pattern and mina of the knitting expat podcast had donated a copy of her le moi le shawl which i learned to say especially so i hope you enjoyed that so a big kind of bundle of amazing prizes, project bag, lovely skein of yarn and two patterns up for grabs. So what can you do to get involved with this giveaway you might ask? Well first and foremost I would ask that you go and join my Ravelry group. I shall be opening a thread in the Ravelry group called the 4000 plus subscribers giveaway. My prompt for this giveaway is I would like some feedback you guys, podcast feedback. So in your comment on that post, all you have to do is kind of tell me what you like about the podcast, maybe what you don't like about the podcast. Tell me what you would like to see on the podcast. Maybe you'd like to see more of something or maybe there's something that I haven't talked about that you would like to see. Let me know. I'd really, really appreciate your feedback because more important than anything is that I want this podcast to continue and grow and thrive and go on and on and on. So your feedback and your opinions are super super important so I'd like to hear everything that you have to say and I just think it will be it will be really really great for the podcast and hopefully it'll give me some ideas for new things to do in the future which is yay really really awesome so excited go to the Ravelry group and enter the giveaway <laughs> One thing else that I would like to talk about before um, we go forward into knitting and all that good stuff is now that it's getting a little bit warmer, I'm not actually drinking tea. I got a nice glass so I can have summer beverages. Ah, super refreshing. So yeah, not as fun as one of my many, many mugs that I have, but yeah, little kill in a jar with a handle and a fancy stripy straw. And yeah, it's really, really good. It's so hot right now in the UK. It went up to, I think, 25 degrees yesterday, which for May is crazy. But hopefully, fingers crossed, I may be able to get out for a little bit of sunshine today. Um, let's not spend too much time just sitting indoors speaking to a camera and try and get outside and enjoy the sunshine and, and soak up some of that vitamin D. Although I can't sit in direct sunlight for too long because I do just turn into a lobster. <laughs> but on that note, let's move on to our next segment, some knitting 
because that's why you guys are here, isn't it? So let's talk about what's on my needles. So like I said, I haven't done a huge amount of knitting this week. I did have two finished objects last week, so I feel that my, um, my FO quota has been met for a little while. But let me get started with something that has been on the needles for quite a while. And this week, I visited it again. So it's living in my Mina Makes project bag. I love this bag, Mina. Thank you so, so much. And it is my, as I have named them, because if you're new here, I do like to give my projects funny names. It just gives me a lot of joy. My happy thank you more please socks. Now the name for this sock basically came from the fact that I started this pair of socks back when I was super super poorly and just wanted some vanilla socks to knit on to make me feel better and these really did brighten up my day when I had the horrible flu lurgy. I believe that there's, um, I got that name from a film, it's not a film that I've actually seen so I really, this sock has no link to the film of the same title. I just when I was in my kind of monosyllabic illness in bed, unable to talk or really do anything, these felt very happy, thank you, more please, socks. <laughs> so I have already completed the first of these socks, which is here, finished that a little while ago, and I had cast this sock on straight away but it was langu languishing for quite a while and I hadn't shown it much love. To be honest in terms of sock knitting I still love sock knitting but I found that it's not the project that I've wanted to kind of reach for automatically as it was um, a few months ago but this I picked up to work on both on the journey to London to visit Eric and we sat in Regent's Park for about three hours I think and we just knitted and chatted and this is what I knitted on. So the legs growing quite nicely. This yarn, by the way, is uh, by Colouring Book Yarns and it is in the Merry Everything Hexy colourway. It's self-striping and I'm knitting it on um, Knit Pro Symphony wooden needles, Magic Loop, obviously. I enjoy Magic Loop and they are 2.25 millimeter needles and I absolutely love them. These are probably some of my go-to sock knitting needles. I really, really, really love them. The next project that is on my needles this week is a new project, ooh. So you may or may not know, I am actually one of the test knitters of the new pattern by lovely Debbie and Amy of the Periscoping Sisters, which is called A Random Act of Colour. I am test knitting this pattern with a couple of other lovely ladies from the podcasting world, so you should probably be seeing this pattern pop up all over the podcasty sphere <laughs> over the next coming weeks. I have not done that much on this project. In fact... This is how much I've done. This is what I mean when I say I haven't really been knitting this week. I did want to cast this on. It was kind of end of the day and I'd promised myself that I would cast on this shawl. And here it is, my little kind of handlebar <laughs> moustache version of this shawl. But um, it is the most beautiful pattern, absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to work on this more. In fact, I think this is gonna be my Sunday afternoon knitting. This is the main colour, which is a colour called Fiona, but I also have this beautiful green that I'll be using, which is called Iris, um, Emerald, <laughs> this one's Emerald, and then this pink, which is my other colour, is Iris. So I have these three beautiful colours that are all going together. I love them. And the, the amazing thing about this pattern and this yarn, this yarn was um, donated by Anzula, fibers and it's their squishy base and my goodness it's incredible it has cashmere which makes me super happy because you all know that I love anything with cashmere and we were allowed to pick whatever colors we wanted so yay for my color scheme it's a fabulous pattern it will be coming out in June and there will be a knit along which is going to be hosted by the lovely periscoping sisters so keep an eye out for that and yeah I'll show you more progress on that as soon as I have more. So the last work in progress that I'm going to share with you for what's on my needles this week is of course my cozy memories blanket, the love of my life, my favourite project of all time 
I can't tell you how much I'm in love with this blanket, you guys. I mean, you'll know from me talking about it recently how happy it has made me, but one of the other reasons that I feel I haven't got a huge amount else to share with you is because my every waking minute that I want to knit is spent knitting on this. It's quite large now, as you can see. I have completed 41 squares since I started um, kind of on the revamp of this blanket. So last week on Wizarding Week, I was sharing with you my Harry Potter row, which started here with Hedwig and then Harry, Ron, Hermione and Dumbledore, then London House Yarns and their four founders colourway and the Voldemort colourway was the last one that I had done and obviously all of these character names are done by um, Nora George. Nora George yarns which are fabulous. Since last week I added in, I completed my Harry Potter row with Hagrid, McGonagall, Sprout, Snape, which I'm absolutely in love with. Look at those colours. Oh, And then right at the end I just had to add in my um, beautiful little bit of Gnome Acres in their Bertie Botts colourway which the skein of yarn was gifted to me so generously by Cheryl last week and before I've even knit anything with that skein of yarn it is going to be socks, probably vanilla socks to be honest because the colours in this just need to be shown off in vanilla socks but I just felt that it was imperative that I added that little square of Bertie Bots onto the end and it's beautiful, has gold Stellina in it, it makes me so happy. But I've also started my next row and this row I decided was going to be themed my Nessa row. So this row is dedicated to the wonderful Nessa of Kilter Craft and if you haven't checked out her podcast you absolutely should, she is one of my favourite podcasters and every time she uploads an episode I'm like there watching straight away. Absolutely love her. She's a wonderful lovely person and we did a mini skein swap. She actually sent me 12 little mini skeins which is a whole row so I was like well this has to be the Nessa row on the Cozy Memories um, blanket. So I have as yet knitted five squares on here. The first one is this incredible kind of ombre one, which goes from this beautiful aqua blue through to a kind of lavender purple and into this pink, and I love this colorway. The problem that I have is, I know that a lot of you are gonna absolutely adore this, and I can't for the life of me find the little label that was on the mini skein that Nessa gave me. So Nessa, help, so help me out. Do you know what yarn this is? Because I know that everyone's gonna ask me, so please, please let me know um, what this one is, because if anything, I'd quite like to have some more <laughs> because it's so beautiful, and the way that the colors kind of change is just stunning. I'm sorry if you can hear that, the neighbourhood dogs are going absolutely manic and I would like to say that I'm pretty proud that my little poochie, my roly boy, is just sitting nice and quietly downstairs chewing on a bone and not barking when mummy is podcasting. But some of these dogs, they're just being too rude. I may need to wait while they quieten down. Beverage. I think they've stopped. Really? really next door neighbour's dogs. So, sorry about that. My two favourite colours that I have knitted into this blanket so far are definitely this yellow and this one, which I kind of think of hot pink beetroot colour. And both of these are by Berenvulla and they are in the barefoot um, base. And the other two in the blanket are these two, which I believe is a Patton's Croy and a Knit Picks Stroll. And this one's beautiful as well. Really, really soft. Um, and the colour's beautiful. That colour is called Woodland. I'm really, really enjoying knitting with all of the minis that lovely Nessa gifted to me in our swap. And I'm really happy that I've got an entire row that's just dedicated to lovely Nessa, because whenever I see it, I shall think of you, Nessa. Aren't they gorgeous? 
41 squares I have knitted in this blanket since I started doing my revamp and I am so happy with it. I do need to weave in some ends. The back is looking a little bit crazy with all those ends, but I love it. I'm so glad that I kind of revamped it and started it again. I want to knit on it all the time. Everybody says how inspiring these Cozy Memories blankets are because no matter how many people do them, they're so unique for the individual who is making them and they're so expressive of your personality. And I just find that amazing. And I love mine. I shall wear it. It's so lovely. Literally, I spend a huge amount of my time now just thinking, what can go in that next gap? What can go in that gap? I already have like the next six colours all lined up, ready to go. All of my um, my little minis have been wound and they're ready to go. And yeah, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okie dokie, moving on to our next segment, which is stash enhancements. So during my time in London with lovely Eric, we went to Angel which incidentally is one of my favourite places in London. I absolutely love Angel. It's just a beautiful, beautiful area and it's full of cool places to go. One of which being Loop of London, which is one of the kind of more well-known yarn stores in London. And it's definitely worth a visit if you're ever in the London area. But Eric said when he contacted me to say that he was going to be in London, that he'd already thought that he would want to visit Loop. And the fact that we got to go there together was just fantastic. We had a really really lovely time. We browsed for the probably over an hour in loop looking at absolutely everything. They are kind of high end in terms of the cost of everything. So it's you're not going to find kind of your basic yarns there, kind of more cheaper alternatives. But there's something there for everyone and it's a beautiful beautiful shop in a lovely area of London and I had the best time browsing around everything. I had an idea of what I wanted to buy before we actually got to Loop. Both Eric and I went on their website and had a quick browse through what they stock. And this is a bit of a long story and a bit of a weird one, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, because you know, my podcast, I can talk about whatever I want. And recently in the last couple of weeks, I watch a lot of podcasts. To be honest, I watch more podcasts than I do anything else. I don't really watch a huge amount of, of television during the day or when I'm by myself. I just watch podcasts. And one of the podcasts that I absolutely love is Brooklyn Knit Folk with the lovely Jacqueline. Hi Jacqueline, hope you're well. Um, but I had a dream recently recently that Jacqueline and I met up and she was telling me that I had to knit a particular pattern. She wasn't kind of saying, oh, I think you, I think it would be good. She was like, you will knit this pattern. And I was kind of like, okay, Jacqueline, I'll, I, I can do that. And it was, it was such a strange dream because Jacqueline's not that kind of a person. She's not going to sit there and be like, you will knit this pattern. But when I woke up, the memory that I had was so kind of strong of this dream that I looked up that pattern again and I thought, you know what, that's exactly what I want to knit. Now Jacqueline's already made a version of this on her podcast and I will try my best to locate the episode that she has this as one of her finished objects and I'll hopefully link it in the show notes so that you can take a look at hers. But when you see her finished object, you will know probably why my subconscious made a kind of note of that and then gave me this dream to say that I had to to make this project but the pattern that I saw was the void shawl. So first of all while we were in loop I managed to find the magazine that has that pattern. This magazine is called Amirisu, I believe that's how it's pronounced and it is bilingual and it is half English and half Japanese. And while we were browsing through Loop, I saw this there and I thought, I was just considering to buy the pattern on Ravelry and have it as a digital download. But when I saw how gorgeous this magazine is, I was just too tempted by it to leave it behind. So the void is this pattern and it's this beautiful textured shawl wrap and it's just 
gorgeous. The rest of this magazine, I haven't had the chance to read it properly, is absolutely stunning. There are some amazing other patterns in here. Also the cool thing is that when you actually buy one, it gives you a coupon to be able to download the ebook version from Ravelry. So in buying this, I still have that ebook version on, on Ravelry, which is just super, super useful. So I don't necessarily have to keep this with me all the time, but I really like this magazine. It's got some really interesting looking articles as well. And um, yeah, you never know. Might be a subscriber if I enjoy this because it's just beautiful and really nicely put together. And it's made with really cool paper. You know, when something's printed nicely, it just makes you wanna like use it more. But all of that aside, I had to get some yarn, obviously, to be able to make the void shawl. And the void shawl is made out of kind of worsted weight yarn. So I knew that I needed to look specifically at the yarn of a particular weight. So I know that the pattern originally was made with yarn by Woolfolk, and it's their um, worsted weight. However, when I looked at that yarn in loop, beautiful though it was and the texture was just stunning it was so soft and so luxurious it was completely out of my price range as I remember correctly it was around about 20 pounds per skein and you needed five skeins and I was not about to drop a hundred pounds on a wrap I I just thought that's going to be a little bit a little bit too much a little too excessive for me so I had already kind of got this idea in my mind after looking at what they stocked um, online before I got there that I was super super interested in Quince & Co Lark and that is what I ended up buying. So I have five skeins of Quince & Co. My first ever Quince & Co purchase because as far as I know Loop is the only bricks and mortar store in London that actually stocks Quince & Co. And here it is. Isn't it beautiful? I've noticed that the light in this podcast is kind of making these look different colours, but that is literally just the light. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So five skeins. I don't need to show you all five skeins at once. This is Chanterelle, the colourway. And there's the lovely label, Quince and Colac. It's 100% American wool. And I'm a little bit obsessed with it. Since I brought this home, I've just been kind of sitting and squishing it and I can't wait to cast this on. It's so beautiful. It's all squishy, squishy, squishy. Yes. I know that there's been a little bit of interest around the Void Shawl, particularly um, after Eric and I posted our vlogs. And in Eric's vlog, I mentioned that I would be using this yarn to knit the Void Shawl. There's a possibility there may be a cal in the works. What do you guys think? Let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in because obviously I'm making this anyway. So maybe you wanna knit along with me. We should all knit along together. The more void shawls that there are in the world, the better as far as I'm concerned. So do leave me a little comment and let me know. All of these purchases as well are living in my loop tote bag. Look at that, 10 fabulous years of loop London. Had to get a tote bag, love tote bags. And this is a really good size actually, and it was only about three pounds, I think. So totally worth it. Lots and lots of room for yarn. And I think that my void shawl will probably be living in this bag because of the amount of space that there will be for it. So yay. I made one more purchase at Loop London, but instead of sharing it in the stash enhancement segment, I am actually going to move on to my next brand new segment and you will soon find out why and you can probably guess from the name of the segment what it is that I purchased but brand new first week ever new segment the name is what would a bookworm do also known as WWBWD <laughs> <laughs> so by popular demand a lot of people wanted me to share more books on the podcast in terms of what I've been reading and that type of thing because I stated a couple of weeks ago that as a former bookworm I really really want to start reading again and a lot of people were very very excited about that so I have two books that I want to talk about this week. So the first one was obviously the purchase that I made in Loop and it's a book that I've been wanting to get hold of 
for a really long time since I heard about it at Unravel and it is called the London Craft Guide and it was produced by Yarn in the City who incidentally have an audio podcast that I have now subscribed to and I'm just part way through their most recent episode and they're fantastic so if you're into audio podcasts do give them a little look. The London Craft Guide is basically exactly what it says on the cover. It is an itemised kind of breakdown of places that you can go in London for different things to do with craft. So that includes yarn, fabric, haberdashery and then a projects, day trips and resources section at the, bot at the back. So I love the aesthetic of it. And a lot of what I buy, I'm not gonna lie, is based on the aesthetics, on the kind of the styling of the thing. So that appealed to me right away. It's got a really nice feel. It's paperback, but it has that kind of soft finish, that almost suede finish to the book, which is really, really lovely. And in terms of what's included inside, it just excites me so much because there are places that are included in this book in terms of particularly fabric that I have never seen included in a kind of guide to London before. In particular, when I was still working in theatre, I worked in Piccadilly and one of my favourite things to do kind of before shows or between shows if we were having a two show day was to go down Berwick Street which is in Soho, just behind kind of where the theatres are in that particular part of the West End. And there were a couple of shops that I used to go to all the time, and that is the Berwick Street Cloth Shop and Borovic Fabrics. And the fact that they're both in here and they're being recognised as the kind of amazing shops that there are is so exciting to me as someone who used to live in London and do most of her fabric purchasing in London. The lovely thing about the book as well is that it has this day trip section so it's kind of assuming that if you're going to be in London for some time maybe on holiday that you might want to visit slightly further afield while you're here so for example if you were coming from the states to London you may want to visit Cambridge, Oxford, Brighton, Bath but I just think that's a lovely touch so it's not just focused entirely on London although that's the main focus there's things in here that can kind of extend your your crafty journey through the um the different shops of London to just outside which is really exciting it also includes some really cute patterns at the end so there are knitting patterns crochet patterns even a couple of sewing projects my favorite of which has to be the knitter's tool roll. I definitely want to make one for myself and yeah I'm really happy to finally have this book. Even though I know already about a lot of the places that are in here it's lovely to have them all in one place and also as a kind of reminder and a checklist for when I'm going to London and what I want to see. There were some places in this that even I as someone who used to live in London hadn't heard of, hadn't thought of to visit so something I would definitely recommend buying. In particular, if you're not local to London at all, this is a great way to plan a holiday. Because if you're going on holiday, let's be honest, you're going to want to get yarn and fabric. The next book that I'm reading is something that I have bought a little while ago, but I've only just got around to starting. And I started this on the train to London when I went to visit Eric the other day. And I'm already completely in love with it. And that is... Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert and the tagline for this book is creative living beyond fear. So when it says creative living, Elizabeth kind of states that she's not talking about the fact that she's anticipating everyone wanting to kind of drop everything and, and be a ballet dancer or be a writer or be a musician at the, the kind of expense of everything else. Creative living she kind of describes as having a form of creativity in your life that brings you joy in your soul even if it's just at the beginning of every day at the end of every day and you spend the rest of your life doing a more average nine to five job just having that part of your life that gives you that creative joy is what creative living is and as far as i'm concerned that's what knitting is surely having creative living in your life this book deals with how we get in front of ourselves and how we prevent ourselves from achieving everything that we might want to creatively. In particular, 
dealing with the fact that in order to be creative, we have to fight our own fear because fear and creativity go hand in hand. As Elizabeth puts it, they're almost like conjoined twins. And that can mean that sometimes because of that fear, we prevent ourselves from doing things that would make us so much more satisfied in our lives and so much more happier and so much more fulfilled. For example, I'm celebrating this week the fact that I've now reached over 4,000 subscribers on YouTube. Less than a year ago, before I even started doing this on a regular basis, I was telling myself there was no way that anyone would ever want to watch a podcast that involved me, that I didn't have anything to add to the podcasting world and the knitting podcasting world that hadn't already been said probably by someone better. And so I stopped myself for probably months, if not years, from starting this podcast because I was scared, because I was frightened and because I thought I wasn't enough. And that's what this book is about. So no matter what you're doing with your life, whether you're thinking, I want to start a podcast, maybe you want to start a business, maybe you just want to learn how to knit a pair of socks, maybe you just want to learn to knit at all, maybe you want to sew a garment because you've never done that before and you're telling yourself that in some way you can't and in some way you're not going to be very good or that it's not worth it but you still really, really deep down do kind of want to do that, read this book, even though I've only just started it, I'm not even halfway through, is giving me so much joy and is making me dream about the other things that I can do, things I can do with this podcast, things that I can do within my own life, to just live that creative life beyond fear. Love this book. You guys should all read it. So I just have one more segment left on the podcast this week, and that is General Waffle. General Waffle? So General Waffle is my segment where I kind of waffle on about any particular subject that takes my fancy that week. It may not necessarily be linked to anything fibre related or sewing related. It's just whatever really takes my fancy or whatever's got me thinking that particular week. So this week, I'm going to talk about something that is a little bit difficult for me to talk about, for to be honest with you. But recently, I've realised that doing what I do and sharing kind of the things that I do on this podcast means that I kind of have to talk about this in order to be as honest with you as possible and in order to kind of share a part of my creative process that I feel up to this point I haven't been sharing with you. So this week I'm going to be talking in my general waffle about body image and being body confident. I know... It's a little bit of a more, shall we say, heavy topic than the kind of things I usually talk about. You know, if it's not your thing, feel free to just, you know, say bye bye and move on. You know, this is always a happy place. It's not about anything too hard or too intense. Know that I love you, even if you listen to this or not, but I kind of feel like I have something pretty interesting to say and I promise it is linked to my creative process, in particular, knitting garments and sewing garments for myself. So you might want to stick around. So when it comes to my body image, I am not very confident within my own body. In particular, I am not very confident within my own body right here, right now, in this moment. Over the past several years, I've had a lot of life changes and I feel that my body has always reflected where I am in my life. Back in kind of 2009, when I graduated from drama school, I was constantly dancing, constantly moving, constantly performing. I was probably in one of the most lightest weights that I've ever been in my life. So I was pretty tiny. I was in good physical shape because of the amount of exercise that I was doing just a part of my regular day-to-day -day life. When you're a performer and doing eight shows a week, you do a lot of physical activity and it's not even something that you really have to think about. From that point, a lot of things have changed in my life over the last seven years. I performed full-time in musical theatre. Then over the next couple of years or so, for one thing, I'm at Emrys. I got into a committed relationship. We moved in together. I then decided that theatre wasn't necessarily for me. So 
all that exercise wasn't really a part of my life anymore. I then started doing jobs that required me to be on my feet, but definitely not be physical. I got married. Emrys and I bought our own house together. We moved into our house. We bought a dog. Our lives have changed so much over the last seven years and my body has changed with them. When Emrys and I first started dating, I feel that my weight fluctuated because of the, the excitement about being with someone new and then, you know, you kind of settle down a little bit and when you're more happy and comfortable, naturally, I think you tend to put on a little bit more weight and then when we were planning the wedding, all the weight dropped off because I was so stressed and then we obviously got married, we moved into this house that we had a huge amount of work to do, again, stress and planning and weight fluctuations and all of that type of thing. I feel that we've we've kind of reached a plateau phase because all of the stress that we had in our relationship obviously we get stressed and that type of thing happens but we've reached a quite a lot of big milestones and we've overcome them we've passed them and one of the things that I find that when my life gets to these points of kind of calm and consistency naturally I start putting on weight because I'm comfortable and I get a bit lazier and that's just what happens with me. Long story short, I am kind of feeling physically not as confident as I have done in the past. I am in no way saying that I am overweight, that I am, you know, needing drastic changes in order to be the kind of body type that I want to be. I feel, feel like it's important to address the fact that I'm not 100% comfortable in the body that I currently have because it's very different from the body that I had, say, seven years ago, say, five years ago, say, two years ago. Sometimes just not being used to the shape that you are or the body that you're in can put you into a really, really dark place when it comes to how you treat yourself and how you make yourself feel about those changes. So like I said, right now, I do not feel 100% confident in the body that I'm in. And the worst possible thing that you can do in that type of a situation is to stress over the fact that clothes are no longer fitting you. Now this morning, before I made this podcast, I had a minor little bit of a breakdown. The weather is changing here in the UK. Everything's getting a lot hotter, which automatically makes me want to bring out summer clothes. And when I was trying on kind of tops and outfits this morning when I was getting dressed, I had to try on about five different things before I even found something that fitted me. And it was really quite disheartening. My automatic reaction is, I'm going to punish myself. I will never eat again. This is awful. One of the reasons that this can feel a little bit stressful is being someone who creates a lot of their own wardrobe, I feel that if I'm not happy in the body that I'm in, that it makes me not want to make clothes for this body. Because I think I'll lose some weight, I'll, I'll tone up, I'll go to the gym, I'll get fit, I'll do all of these things, then I'll have the body that I like, and then I can make all the nice clothes for it, and it'll look really great, and I'll be really happy and confident. Putting all that pressure on yourself and saying you'll do all these nice things for you when you are the perfect you is, is really unfair on the you that you are here and now. I do intend to kind of eat more healthily and exercise and get out and that kind of thing, but where does that put me right here and now in this body that I'm living in in this moment? So what I've decided to do is to make a conscious effort to accept me exactly as I am right here and now and if that means that I make clothes that fit me now perfectly and look great, and that if I were to lose a bit of weight, don't necessarily work so much, it doesn't matter. I have the skill set to be able to alter things and, you know, I can always make more things. That's not a problem. The problem is when we make ourselves feel bad for being a particular size and shape and always striving to be different. And right here, right now, I am saying, I fully admit, I do not feel confident being this shape. It's not something that I've kind of had to experience at any point in my life before. But this is the body that my husband fell in love with. This is the body that I am living in right here, right now. This is the body that each week comes and podcasts for you guys. 
I should love the body that I'm in. Even if I can see its imperfections, I embrace those imperfections and yeah, I'll find a better way to dress them so that I don't find them as kind of distracting and I'm not thinking about them all the time. The important thing is to accept yourself exactly as you are, to want to improve things, but not to punish yourself in the meantime. I feel like I've waffled on around that subject for quite a long time, so I hope that that kind of makes sense. Linking this back to knitting and sewing and all that kind of stuff, I am determined to be more conscious when it comes to my making. I want to make sure that I'm not just seeing a pretty fabric and making a dress with it, seeing a pretty skein of yarn and making socks or a sweater or something like that. I want to have a, a wardrobe that works well as a whole, that suits me, that makes me feel great, that makes me feel confident. And that is what my next kind of big project in terms of my arc of making, shall we say, will be. I started this when I went to Loop with Eric and I purchased the yarn for my void shawl. So rather than just picking a colour and thinking, this is the prettiest colour I've ever seen, I shall make a shawl out of it. When I went to Loop, I took with me this lovely skein of yarn, which is my Gashley Crumb yarn that I purchased from Kristen, which I will be making a featherweight cardigan out of. I think that this will become a staple and I want it to go with everything that I'm making. I want this to be a staple and I want it to go with most of the things that I'm wearing. So therefore, these had to go together. The light isn't amazing, but you can kind of see what I mean. I feel that they're very, very complementary and they work well with each other. The other things that I were thinking about whilst holding these two yarns in loop were the fact that I have a lot of fabric that I haven't used that I'm wanting to make projects out of. One of the projects that I do make, want to make for winter is a bit of a, a cape. I have this beautiful boiled wool that I've been dying to make a cape out of for ages, which I absolutely love. It's in one of my all time favorite colors, this burgundy. And can we talk about how these look? That color palette makes me so happy. But also, in addition to the cape that I want to make, I've been talking forever about the fact that I want to make a duffel coat out of this beautiful piece of fabric. My um, Harris tweed in this kind of bluey green colour. I'm happy with how that looks too. I want to start making conscious decisions to have a wardrobe with consistency that can be interchangeable, all of these pieces that can be worn together, that can be worn in different combinations. And the idea of that is just really, really exciting me at this time. One person that I would like to kind of draw your attention to in terms of inspiration for this kind of turn around with my making is amazing, lovely, wonderful Jenny of the Tiny Paper Foxes. And if you haven't watched that podcast, which is hosted by Jenny and her husband Devon and their lovely cat Colin, you should totally, totally, totally go and check them out because they are amazing. But one thing that I admire most about Jenny, she has a beautiful sense of style. She's very much in, in touch with who she is and how she wants to look. And everything that she makes is reflected of that which I really really admire but she has started quite a lot of kind of knit alongs and make alongs recently that are all about thinking about making things that go together thinking about outfits and consciously making decisions based on other items that you have in your wardrobe in terms of what you're creating for example me getting the void shawl which I know is going to be a staple and going to last and going to go with everything I'm trying not to be distracted by the, ooh, the pretty sparkly things, and really take time and think about what I know that I will wear, what I'll enjoy wearing, and what's gonna make me feel confident, and gonna make me love myself a little bit more while I'm wearing it. A lot of the time as a podcaster, I feel you have to exude this sense of confidence that everything's perfect, that everything's amazing, and sometimes that's just not true. I'm working on it, you guys. I'm really happy to have you along for the journey. And I'm really, really excited about what this next kind of chapter in my creative wardrobe journey is going to be. Whew. 
So that was a little bit heavier than I tend to get on the podcast. I feel good about sharing that with you and I hope that you feel good about coming along this journey with me. But yeah, that's about everything that I have to talk about this week, you guys. Thank you so, so much for spending a little bit of time with me. As always, there are so many incredible podcasts out there and I can't tell you how much I appreciate that you would want to spend a little bit of time with me makes me so happy. Um, as always, please like the video if you've enjoyed what you've seen. Um, subscribe if you want to be kept up to date with when I have videos up here. I do upload every week on a Monday, so there will always be a little bit of yarny, sewing-y, crafty goodness for your viewing pleasure. I hope you all have a wonderful week filled with crafting and loving yourself and body confidence. <laughs> but for now, I am just going to say happy sewing, happy knitting, and I will see you all again soon. Love you. Bye.